Okay, okay, I know, I couldn't help myself with the title to this video, but it is kind of true, and this is an important update to my Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro review videos. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse, and first let me address two things. One, yes, I really do need a haircut, and secondly, I have the window open because man, it is it hot today. It's absolutely insane. The camera's dialed back to like minimum exposure, and uh, yeah, so I do apologize if you can hear anything outside, but oh, it's a doozy. But let's launch right into it. So a few days ago, I released my Ender 3 Pro review, and I compared it against the Ender 3, which I tested a few months ago, and it was met with a lot of feedback, let's be real. A lot of people shared some of my experiences, but a lot of people disagreed strongly with my results and conclusion, particularly when it came down to the print quality. A lot of people said they were getting much better print quality than I showed, and I was a little bit skeptical, I'll be honest, because, look, I had a bad experience with the initial Ender 3. It had issues with a coupler, I had poor extrusion control. So when it came to the Pro, it had to really wow me to pull me out of that expectation. So I didn't really push my slicer settings much beyond what Teaching Tech and Chuck Hellebuck over on his channel had kind of provided, and I used that, and I did have some stringing. Well, a few people stepped up to the plate to prove to me that the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro could print without stringing, and one of those people was Chazmeister. <laughs> so, on Twitter, he sent me a picture which shows very clearly a retraction test, a stringing test, with no stringing off the Ender 3. It's flawless, absolutely perfect. Something you'd expect off a very expensive machine, not off a $200 3D printer. And that got me very intrigued. So I've spent the last two days testing slices and settings with a retraction test to get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on, and I think I've nailed it. So here's the thing, Chaz Meister was using Cura. For all my tests, and to be honest, for the last two or so years, I've used a combination of Simplify 3D, Idea Maker, Slicer, Prusa Edition, for example, not Cura. I haven't touched Cura. I haven't even touched the new Cura. And I haven't touched the 15 point whatever version for a very long time. I didn't really like the interface. I'll be honest, it's a very personal thing. But he was getting these fantastic results in Cura, the latest version. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I downloaded his G code and put it onto my Ender 3 Pro to validate the results. And the first test with his identical G code was this. So. Yes, there's no stringing, but there's still blobs. And this was kind of frustrating, and it was opening the the gateway to a flurry of tests. But there's a few blobs on it. This is the Sainsmart Pro PLA. And really, he was showing perfect results with no stringing off Cura. I was not getting perfect results, I was getting blobs. What's the variable? The filament. So I changed tack. I went from the Sainsmart PLA to the silver PLA I tested for my Christmas lattice torture tests. And it worked. Here's the proof. This is using the identical G-code sent to me by Chazmeister. This is when it stops extruding. This is very normal on Bowdens and even direct drive printers. But uh, that's the only string. That's the only wisp. It's flawless off my Ender 3 Pro. No changes to the PTFE. I changed the PTFE on my Ender 3, but not on the Pro. So there you go, guys. You can print without strings on the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro. And I do owe you guys and Creality an apology in that circumstance, because I didn't believe you could. I didn't get that result, but now I have, and it's opened up a whole world of possibilities. So what's actually doing this? Well, I wanted to analyze the G-code that was sent to me, and the best software I found for analyzing G-code is actually Simplify 3D. So I'm gonna drop that G-code into Simplify 3D, and let's have a look at what is actually going on to stop this stringing from occurring at all on this print. All right, guys, this is Chaz Meister's G-code in Simplify 3D. So you can just open any G-code in Simplify 3D because it has the best viewer, in my opinion. And that's what we want to find out. We want to find out what's stopping the stringing. And as we scroll back in this test, the red is a rapid, a movement. 
Um, and that's because it's very fast, uh, because this is a different G code to what's being spat out by Simplify 3D. We can't view by feature type, but that's fine for this. We can see that red is clearly when it's moving between the points. This is where you would normally get stringing. So what's stopping the stringing? Well, look very closely here. I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can. So let's preview it by line. This is each line in the G code that is being 3D printed. And if we watch it slowly, you can see that it comes in, it starts extruding on the innermost perimeter, then it moves out one to the middle perimeter. This is a three perimeter file uh, setting. And then it's gonna come out to the outer perimeter. So it's in to out like that coming out. But that's what most slices do. Look what it does next. See that? It moves a little bit, then goes back in, then extrudes, then moves across, and then comes out, and then moves. It's this movement, this retract inside the part, and then movement across the surface of the part, which stops the stringing, at least in my informed uh, opinion, after my experiences with other G-code and other slices, and this is called combing, I believe, in Cura. But really, for this sort of test, it stops the stringing. The other tiny quirk in this G-code is this tiny line here. And that is the outer wall wipe distance, which again does help to hide the seam slightly and reduce that stringing. In my test, I turned it off and on. It's only 0.2 millimeters long. So in my test in Cura turning it off and on, I didn't see any visible difference but this also will probably go into play if you have serious string issues to actually reduce that, but it is the combing that actually seems to do the, the biggest difference. So now we know that it is possible to remove stringing completely on the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, I wanted to know if these magical Cura settings could be transposed to other slices, because I remember I was using Simplify 3D and Idea Maker originally, and I was still getting issues. And this is what I've ended up with in Simplify 3D based on my learning in the last few days and Chad Meister's profile in Cura. So going back through the layers, you'll notice there is some key significant differences between this and the G code out of Cura. Um, there's no combing as such, at least that I understand in Simplify 3, there is avoid crossing uh, outside perimeters which is what you use for, for example, flexible filaments, but this has to go across, that's the point, it has to go across between the two posts. The result is very different to what Cura produced. It's very directional in terms of where it's got the seam, and in terms of result though, very good. Um, Simplify 3D's result did become a bit wispy with the Sane Smart filament, because I think we've identified that that kind of has an issue with stringing, but the result out of the, with the silver Prusa filament is really, really nice. To be honest, you can barely tell it apart from the Cura one, apart from the seam. I am also using the magic numbers that Chuck mentioned in a recent video. So it's, I'm using a 0.16 millimeter layer height, not 0.15. Whether or not that plays any significant difference, I don't know. So despite having a different path to reduce the stringing, it still works and I'm quite happy with this result out of Simplify 3D. So the next test was to try Idea Maker, which is sort of my favorite underdog slicer. And really, if I can get Idea Maker to work, that's awesome because it's free and does customizable support. And here we have my custom settings within Idea Maker. And again, I've transposed everything I could from Cura. Uh, the thing about Idea Maker is it's a different layout again. So there might be some things that are different or that don't translate across. You have different settings under different names but you can't lie over the results. Again, exceedingly clear. Uh, no stringing at all. In fact, when it pulls away at the top, that's even smaller than the Cura one. The only thing I would say about the idea maker result is the stitching on the seam is more obvious, but really it's a seam. You get them on FDM 3D printers. It's completely unavoidable. So no stringing again. So that's idea maker, Cura and Simplify 3D all tweaked to remove stringing. But there's gotta be a catch, right? You know, you can't just magically remove stringing without kind of making a compromise. And yeah, there is. You see, with all these tests, I've disabled Z-hop, where the actual Z-axis, Z-axis moves up between each point. And 
it's pretty obvious with this Christmas tree lattice test that you kind of need it for some files, at least in my experience. This is the Cura Profile, the same one that produced that perfect retraction test and stringing test. It failed miserably producing this tree. In fact, my original settings on the Ender 3 and Pro actually made better work of the lattice tree than this. And that's because Z-Hop is disabled. It doesn't move out of the way from these lower arms that tend to warp up. Better cooling might help again, which I mentioned in my review, but that is a fail. So what about the retraction tests when you turn Z-Hop on using the profiles we just created? The first really interesting one is the Cura one. You saw how fantastic the Cura result was without Z-Hop. Well, look at it with Z-Hop. This is ridiculous. So all I've done is made it move up 0.5 millimeters between each point to help it clear posts. And it's just packed packed full of stringing. It's the worst in the lineup, which is crazy in my opinion. That is such such a small change can result in such a significant difference. What about the other slices though? Changing that number, that single, single setting, does that increase stringing just as badly? Well, interestingly enough, no. The Simplify 3D one has wisps, absolutely. This is the kind of thing I was seeing on like the Gay Anderson cat ears, stuff like that. Very, very small, a hot air gun would instantly remove them but they are there and they weren't there before we had Z-Hop. But the, the, again, the underdog guys, idea maker, right? You would think probably similar extreme to Cura maybe? No, <laughs> none, uh, but it's not perfect. This is really interesting. The idea maker result now has these little sort of raspy bits on the side. It's broken free, it's cleanly broken off. It hasn't left a string across the two posts but it's not as clean as the result without Z-Hop. So where does that leave a conclusion to this follow-up? Back in 2015, I did a slicer throwdown between Simplify 3D, Cura, Slicer, Slick 3R as Tom calls it, and Craftware. And back then, there wasn't many slicers available and you kind of could do a comparison, but now, in 2019, there are so many slices out there, most of them completely free, that are insanely powerful. And I don't, truly don't believe that a slicer comparison is possible. Because what we've proven, what I've found out, is material makes a big difference, brand makes a big difference, the printer itself makes a big difference, and the file's geometry makes a big difference. What, what my settings and tests have, have have identified to me is if I want a really nice print with no stringing, I'll use the Cura settings with no Z-Hop. But if I have a model which needs Z-Hop, I'll probably use Idea Maker because the Idea Maker result resulted in less stringing and a better result if I needed Z-Hop. But there is no best, I mean, I always say that, but there is no best slicer. Clearly, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. In conclusion, although I do apologize for the print quality demonstrated in the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro videos after my findings in the last few days, I still have a huge issue with the quality control out of Creality. And clearly releasing that video, many of you have received vastly different machines that are all Ender 3s. And I do get it, the price point is incredibly affordable, but I saw a great conversation in the Ender 3 Facebook group where people came of different opinions and many people view the Ender 3 as being so cheap that it's okay to take a bit of a gamble on which one you get. For example, Chaz Meister, although he got the great results without stringing, his print bed's warped. I don't find, I'm not okay with that. And I know a lot of people are because it's a lower price and you can make tweaks and changes. But for me, um, that's something that doesn't sit well with me and I will mention it in my reviews. And as I always mention in my videos, it's an opinion. You're entitled to a different opinion. You're welcome to. I want you to have a different opinion. I want you to come away with an idea that you formulate yourself that I might be able to help you with and show you things that I think are good and bad. And then you can make your own purchasing decisions based on that and other people's opinions and evaluations. Anyway guys, I'm going to put a link in the video description to my settings I've used for these tests. They're still probably not perfect, but they're pretty good for what I'm getting off the end of three now. And this is with stock hardware as well. The better PTFE will help, 
but this is just possible to get no stringing off stock hardware with the right settings and filament and that sort of thing. And Chuck Hellebuck's also going to be doing a video discussing these findings, so I'm going to put a link here, here, there we go, it's mirrored, uh, here for when his video drops. And if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to Makers Muse, I would absolutely appreciate it. I aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I will always try to be honest and upfront with you guys and update you with things as they come to me and as I discover them because I'm always learning as well. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.